Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Irish Hypnotherapy Conference podcast. Only a few weeks to go to the conference at this stage, so we are all getting excited for it. And uh, this week, we have Jason O'Callaghan. Jason, how are you? Good morning, John. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. It's great to see you again. Great to be here. You were at last year's conference, and your presentation was very, very well received. Thank uh, you. It was a great presentation. Um, how did you find last year's conference? Oh, I thought it was it was brilliant. It was so nice not to have to travel abroad to go to a conference, um, whether I've been at Hypnotos or the, the National Guild ones or any of the big conferences in, in America. Uh, it's so nice to have, because, you know, with, with work and kids, I don't really get a chance to get to America as much anymore. So it's so nice to have a conference here. And it's so nice that we now have a sort of a link in the chain of the conferences around the world from England to Switzerland to America to Las Vegas. And now we have a sort of a, a link of the road that brings people to Ireland. I think this is really something that that is such a brilliant idea that you've come up with. And I'm just jealous I didn't do it myself. <laughs> and that it's really something that's coming. Um, like, I think I think the profession in general is becoming more mainstream um compared to where it was maybe even 10 12 years ago when i started and i think i think the hypnotherapy conference is going to bring give an excuse for a lot of people around the world who are interested in being hypnotherapists or stage hypnotists or uh, want to learn about it or get into it i think it gives people in ireland and people from europe and america a chance to come to ireland to to see a different perspective and meet people from to our culture and see what uh, they can learn i think it's I, I think it's brilliant and i think the great thing the fact that we're trying to attract more and more people from abroad, you know, they're getting a practically free holiday in Ireland. So the Americans can write all this off to tax the English, the Australians. You can write the whole thing off as a business expense and come over and have a great time in Ireland. With us. So I think it's something that a, an awful lot of the expat community and people with Irish ancestry should be really looking at coming over um, to spend a couple of days uh, with their hypnotherapy friends and fellows. And make a holiday out of it either before or after. And I some of them are doing that because not only are there speakers from the States and, and Europe with, uh, and the UK, but there's also people coming. So, like, you know, it's already been booked, you know, so that they're on their way. Uh, people uh, to attend the, great, the conference. The great thing for America that we want to bring in is that it's from from North Carolina, um, from Charlotte, there's direct flights. Obviously, there's flights from New York and Boston. Mm. Uh, but also the hub, the main hub in North Carolina, I think, um, or Charlotte, or North or South Carolina, it, you can fly in from anywhere in America to there and fly straight to Dublin. Right. So it's a direct flight of, you know, know, five, six hours and you're in Dublin. Um, so I think that's, you know, really going to be a game changer for a lot of people that they haven't, they can literally come here straight away. I think it's going to be brilliant for them. Absolutely. And I think when I was in Hypnothoughts last year, and I flew in through Chicago and it was a four hour flight from Chicago to Vegas and it was, you think, God, the, like the, for, for Americans, that's nothing. They just do it all yeah. the time. But you'd be anywhere in Europe in four hours. So anyone, you know, in yeah, any part that, of Europe. Yeah, I think that's also a really good point for people coming from around, from, especially from America or Canada to here, is because if they fly to Ireland uh, for the conference, they can pop over to London. It's an hour away. Paris is an hour and a half away. Berlin, Rome. You know, if you're over here, it's literally a cheap flight to go to any of these main places in Europe. So, you know, while coming over to the conference, which, of course, you can deduct completely from your tax bill as a work expense, you can also pop out to a couple of different places uh, while you're here and, uh, and make it a great European trip as well. Absolutely. And it's a perfect time of the year, too, in April, and that the sun should be shining, but it's Ireland, so you never know. <laughs> it is today. Um, so, like, what I loved about your presentation last year was that it introduced two sides to it. It introduced both the business side and the stage side because you did an actual uh, a performance as well with people and you, you did the whole demonstration with people on stage and it just opened up that whole side to to people who don't normally, who wouldn't necessarily see it. Um, and of course, stage is a huge part of your business, but it's not all stage because you actually have a massively successful clinic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what's interesting and people are surprised because I do stage hypnosis that I'm academically trained. So I hold a, an honors degree in psychology. Mm -hmm. I hold a master's degree in applied psychology from Trinity. I'm also trained in counseling from Minute. I'm trained in CBT, mindfulness, uh, in tra I have a huge amount of academic qualifications. So people would probably more think, 
well, from a clinic side of things, and as as those who are attending last year saw, I was published last year with the Mayo Clinic uh, around the time of the conference, which is the world's leading hospital uh, research group, number one in the world, the Mayo Clinic. Uh, and I've written books and I was a journalist for 10 years. So a lot of people will think, well, you know, why would I be looking at the stage side of things? Well, I suppose that's what I'm trying to do. And originally I would have thought the same. I would never have bridged and gone from clinical stuff and the research and the academic stuff to clinical uh, or to stage. And now I'm finding that it, there are two sides of the same coin. And that's really what I'm trying to bring people to, and I know a lot of big names around the world that I'm friends with, uh, whether those be people like Anthony Gailey or people like Richard Barker, uh, a lot of them will have a clinic side and a stage side to their business um, because one sells the other. And that's really something that I'm focusing on at this year's conference is the sales side of things. And what I learned is that I have people who come to the clinic who may work in events or they may work in the corporate world. They may be getting married. They may be, uh, you know, whatever they're doing. And they will ask me about stage hypnosis. But then on the flip side, when I'm doing weddings and corporate events, uh, individuals will come up and ask about anxiety or stuff, smoking or weight loss. And then they will come to the clinic side of things. So one sort of sells the other. I think that's a, a really good point that, that, that people need to start looking at in the hypnosis world. And mm -hmm. it doesn't take, from the other no and and i hear that all the time from talking to stage hypnotists in europe or in the states that like they use it to to literally promote or to fill the clinic half the time yeah. you know um and i've seen you do it anyway i mean i've literally seen you yeah. do it uh, not too far away from here um yeah. you know um where you've been promoting your clinic side of it and you've actually you know made someone drop a cigarette out of their hand you know you know uh, you're going i never smoke again kind of stuff you yeah know? it um, is Depends. As I said, it's it's we have to stop, um, you know, saying I think there's a demonization and I've seen this with, with David Siegel, who's the guy in Stanford who's the hypnosis experiments is very, very well known. And he sort of his opening salvo of every podcast he does is, oh, you know, people think hypnosis is all about the guy chicken on the stage cooking and he sort of this is stage hypnotists. And even and even Darren Brown did it um, in his Joe Rogan podcast. He kind of you know said, oh. You know, he kind of dissed the stage hypnotist, despite the fact that that was what Darren Brown started off as. You know what I mean? He was famous stage hypnotist for a long time, and a lot of, a lot of time people sort of diss it, and I, I, I have to disagree completely because I can see, um, the power that stage hypnosis has over. You know, we're we're trying to sell hypnotherapy. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to open up the world to hypnotherapy, mainstream therapy. And despite what people think, actually, when you have two or three hundred people, which I'd have at every show I do, every every conference, every event, seeing the power of hypnosis, it opens them up to visiting a hypnotherapist rather than turning them away from it because they see the power of what it can do on stage. And they kind of go, well, well, if that worked for somebody in, a, in, a, in an entertainment environment, it can obviously work very well for me if I want to stop smoking or overcome anxiety. So I think we have to stop um, seeing it as two separate things. And you can also use the hypnotherapy, the stage hypnotherapy. It doesn't have to be all flashy and so on. You can use it in. The thing is I'll be talking about at the conference this year is, is about different ways you can make money as a hypnotherapist. Um, you have this, you know, the school settings, the college settings where you can help people to study. Um, you know, the transition year students, you could be helping the even cert students, junior cert students, you have college students. Like this is always hypnotherapy and help people in an academic setting. So I think, you know, also we're working a lot with the medical, I'm often like with doctors and dentists and people like that. And you know them seeing what can what can happen at a stage show really opens their mind up to something because it is it is pure black magic in my opinion. Absolutely, and I mean it is the same hypnosis that's used in the, in a therapy room. It's just a different direction on the stage. That's yeah. it. But, different. But, yeah. yeah, same umbrella, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely under the same umbrella, and uh, and and I mean you know like the likes of say Sean Michael Andrews and we'll do a, and I've seen them in, also in Vegas where it's your hypnotist show me something but we've all had the case where you've actually you know someone has said well can you show me something and suddenly and it happened to me a few weeks ago and suddenly the phones are ringing on the, on, on the Monday morning because it's like yeah. I want to book in I want to book in I want to book in um, you know um, so Richard yeah. Barker's uh, who I'm a big fan of I think he's the best marketing expert in the world in the field of hypnosis uh, without a doubt Um and he's got every, he's been on everything from Good Morning America to CNN to I think he's been on with even the podcast with the YouTubers Logan Paul. He's been on this 
late show with James Corden, like he's at a different level. And he will say, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what I do. I'm going to show you what I do. And that's his sort of sales pitch. So when he's at, you know, restaurants or events or people that are coming to him on the street asking him, he'll say, he'll just hypnotize them, do a, do a, an induction there and then and hypnotize them, you know, there and then and he finds, you know, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you. And he finds that that's really has helped his business an awful lot as well. Yeah, and you hear that a lot, and uh, particularly at conferences where those presentations come out, um, and it just makes so much sense because most hypnotists, if they are willing to to do that in a public setting, will see the benefit from it in in, in their clinic. I mean, there's no, yeah. no way about it. confidence, which is what I'm what we're trying to teach people. At the Absolutely, moment. and it is just confidence. It's understanding how it works, and then just applying that in any setting whatsoever. Um, yeah, um, so. That presentation was really, really great last year. So for the, the last 12 months, how has your clinic and, and stage hypnosis business actually been? Well, my, my sort of, I have a unique sort of different funnels of income for my clinic. So um, this is something I'm going to be taught, I've been working on over the past while and I'm working on projects. And so this year, I'm not going to be, last year I was focusing on medical hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and so on in the medical setting for hypnotists uh, with the research in the Mayo Clinic. This year, I'm going to be focusing more on new avenues that I've been working on for uh, income, uh, for sales, uh, I like to call it. Because, you know, I primarily, and we've talked about this, I primarily would call myself an entrepreneur or a business person first yeah. and a hypnotist psychologist second. Absolutely. Uh, the problem I have with an awful lot of people who are in our field is that they they want to be the best therapist in the world, and that's great. But then they have no customers. They have no income. So they can't actually become a full-time hypnotist because they can't leave their job or they can't, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I sort of, uh, you know, I've sort of been a bit of a, a sort of pioneer for a lot of stuff. Um, and I like to sort of be a bit of an adventurer in the world of hypnosis and trying. I try so many different things. Well, you know, you know we don't try anything in hypnosis. We just either do yeah. or don't, you know? Yeah, but what I mean, when I'm talking about sales, like I've found over the past year, like we, I've tried to look at the school situation, mm -hmm. you know, training for kids in school using hypnosis. Can we, I'm now working on a new project, which is, seems to be looking like it's going to go very well, which is wellness uh, hypnosis in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. Not, uh, not for entertainment purposes, but um, it's actually, well, it's actually going to mix entertainment and clinical stuff together. And I'm working with a hotel chain and they're very interested in being partners with me on that. Mm -hmm. So like, the best thing is over the past year, some stuff um, like we're constantly working in the clinic, uh, constantly getting clients. Uh, that's a, a wave. Some weeks it's out the door busy, some weeks it's a little bit quieter. On the weeks it's quieter, I'm working on other projects. I'm trying to work it on downloads. We're looking at downloads for vaping, which you would do on cocaine, use alcohol. Um, so I'm always kind of, playing around with ideas mm. uh, such with Ryanair about fear of flying um, you know like sort of I'm always sort of working on different angles um, but the day to day stuff like I said the, the shows or, or the weddings I've got weddings booked in up till 2026 um, already um, I'm working on a lot on social media on, on building up my social media accounts so it's it's a constant battle that I'm always working on but I've mm. never You've had a lot of national attention as well because I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. All the, did that research from um the the stuff you did with Crumland that you were talking about last year? Yeah. Did that help in terms of say the media? Um, it helps. As, well, I just ended up on uh, on Irish radio on Two FM on Jennifer Zamparelli, where I name checked you, and that was that came through the Mayo stuff. See, the yeah. problem, and this is something that I teach at my trainings. The problem is that a lot of us want to get publicity for our clinics, but the, especially when it comes to the national stations, there has to be a really strong angle and it has to have a public service interest. Yeah. You can, because of all the controversy with RTE and so on, believe it or not, you can't just go on anymore and say, hi, I'm a brilliant hypnotist, I'll come to my clinic. You have to have a public service remit, as in they have to get you as a guest on that you can give something back to the public. Yeah. They can't Bug, which it used to just be for years you go and talk about what you want now it has to be so the fact that that was very well researched um 
stuff would come in the hospital and they're published in the Mayo Clinic and helping children overcome a fear of needles using hypnosis, they were able to get me on to you know, the second, third biggest radio show in the country. Um, so that's something that I'm working on as well. Yeah, does it does it help? Look, everything helps. It adds an awful yeah. lot of credit. Well, it gives credibility, doesn't it? I mean, that's, yeah. what it does. it gives, that's basically what you're saying. TV uh, star Lucy Kennedy. Yes, so, I've seen again, so you'll see, you know, when you go onto the website first, what you see on the D4 Clinic website is you'll see the, you know, click here for our publication, the Mayo Clinic adds credibility. Uh, click here to listen to the, the podcast with Jennifer Zamparelli, 2FM adds credibility. Here's a, t a testimonial video from TV star Lucy Kennedy, how I helped the daughter overcome a fear of flying. That's more credibility. So because the fact is that people think it's called social proof and the more social proof you have, the more Absolutely. it makes from the other hypnotherapist down the road or the counselor, whoever. So I'm a big fan of social proof, um, of customer service, uh, value for money. And that's really what I try and 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 do in the clinic. Uh I do with our downloads and and do face to face when I'm when I'm teaching people as well. It's practical stuff that can help you to make more money and have more success as a therapist. Yeah, because ultimately as a therapist, everybody is a business person first and they have to be. Um and that's, that's that's the same in any business to be fair but, you know even if you, if you have a corner shop or whatever yeah. you have to be a business person first or, or the doors don't stay open but that's the problem that's again like if you listen to any successful business person and i've listened to an awful lot of global people online and so on and they say the biggest problem people have with starting a business is they'll invest all their research money into a new office mm -hmm. and they'll get business cards and then they'll build a two, three thousand euro website, and then they'll have a secretary, and then they'll do this, that, and then they have no customers because there was never a need for their custom. So I've really started to refocus on that now. And, uh, you know, ch I think it's a constant change that your business, you know, I'm constantly looking at my bank statements going, okay, do I really need this now? I'm not using this anymore. We also get into the habit of, using the same thing again and again and again and having those direct debits come out again and again and without actually stopping and pausing on what is that actually benefiting is it benefiting my bottom line and an awful lot of the time i found that if you kind of go through your bank statement and see what you're paying for with your business or your personal life if you kind of go through it all you'll realize well i don't actually need that i'm paying this every i don't need it this, I'm paying, it would it be a subscription for a streaming service or would it be you know in my case i had a phone answering service which worked great for years but as my kids got older, I didn't need it as much, but I automatically think I did. So I got rid of that. Uh, accountancy services, paying an ongoing basis rather than paying once a year, I got rid of that. A live chat service, which is a thing that pops up on their website, which again, I was paying monthly for, but I didn't get very many inquiries through it. I got rid of that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's a real case of, I'm renegotiating. I have people in, in, in Pakistan who run ads for me on social media, renegotiating fees with them saying, okay, look, I was paying you this much each month, but... Um, I'm not doing as much sales. So like, can we just cut up by 50%? You know, it's really about trimming the fat. And it's the only way that I've stayed in business for over a decade. Um, and I'm constantly, you know, reevaluating, re looking at stuff, chopping and changing, throwing more ideas out there. Like this week I have clients coming in from legal firms and because of my psychology training, I can do legal, I can write um, letters. You know what I mean? That can, held up in court as an expert on anxiety and so on so that's a very lucrative thing when it comes about to get a good couple of dozen of them each year um so it's constantly coming up with ideas uh, and that's really what i'm going to be talking about this year at the conference about new ways that you can make money as a hypnotherapist new ways that you can make money in your sleep like one of the things i talked about last year which is still working um we set up a funnel during covid uh for weight loss downloads that's made a quarter of a million in passive sales in the past two three years so these are the type of things that people who are in our business can do there's a huge variety of expertise. Like I, as I've said before, I don't deal an awful lot with women's issues. I don't deal with regression. I don't deal with past life trauma. Uh, I don't deal with hypnobirthing, any of that type of stuff. So like there's funnels that can be built for this that you can make an awful lot of money in. Whether you're going to do presentations at schools, whether you're going to do downloads, whether you're going to do uh, speeches for mental health at your local um chambers of commerce the list goes on of stuff that you could be doing to increase your income and keep your business more successful the more successful you are the more people you can help but an awful lot of people in our business unfortunately are a little bit woo woo yeah. uh, as I say, there's I nothing wrong with woo woo a little bit -woo, but you have to have it you have to have the doors open no Maybe absolutely you all day long. no customers it's no like, ultimately yeah. it's about whatever works for the clients yeah. so yeah. sometimes woo, -woo does work <laughs> 
it does it does work but the problem is you have to get the clients no absolutely to do absolutely you don't have any clients no 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 absolutely and i'm only looking at a statement that says I, you know that I, I came across recently which was i make a lot of money and i help a lot of people which yeah is actually a nice way of looking at it because um we need the money to actually survive keep the doors open and we want to help people so it kind of captures both That's exactly what I'm, that's on my own. Again, it's not a going against woo woo or going against like the ethics and so on, what we do. But the, the more successful you are, the more people you can reach, the more people you can reach, the more people you can help, the more people you can help, the more people they tell, the more people you can help. And it just becomes, like I said, is you have to look that our industry um, is completely different. than any other industry it doesn't have the reputation the medical profession has it doesn't have the reputation that counseling has you know and we're, we're seen as sort of um a little bit out there you know Yeah. but we help people there's no legislation for what we do there's no rules for what we do anyone can do what we do but then the problem is is that it's open to a lot of um charlatans it's open to a lot of people who Oh, what they're doing with no training, no professional conduct, uh, say they can cure. I had a woman on this morning, rang this morning, and she's broken up with her husband who was unfaithful to her, and she's got a lot of triggers. And I said, it's, it's, I can't help you with that. That's a counselor's job. You know, it's not, this isn't anything to do with hypnotherapy. And it's the ethic background. You can say, look, this is, it's because it was something that I don't know anything about. I Yeah, wasn't helping. that's fair. If you don't know anything about it, you just, just keep miles Yeah. away. point is that there is an ethical side of things where you have to say, look you know you broke up with your husband you've taken him back things are triggering you about him and unfaithful to you this isn't to do with this isn't to do with hypnotherapy uh this is to do you know she's seeing a counselor and you know i think that's really where you need to go i don't think this is anything to do with very i don't think it's got anything to do with anxiety or confidence or stress it's got nothing to do with weight loss or phobias so you know you don't need a hypnotherapist um And that, so that's that's something that I've learned. And also, like, even recently, I know a lot of people will be preaching about, oh, well, children are really suggestible. I would see children in their teens primarily, or late teens. But, like, last week, I, I saw someone who was nine. Now, it did help. It was an eating issue. It did help. But I kind of came away going, it, it's just too young. You know, the mother was really insistent that she bring the kid in. Because she'd seen the success I'd done with selective eating disorder in the newspapers, the, the the gagging reflex. And I just said, look, you know, I did it once for her. I said, it's fine. But, like, you have to realize as a therapist what you can do, what you can't do. And saying you can cure everything, which a lot of people, again, that I'd have issue with. You know, oh, I'm a chronic alcoholic. Oh, yeah, we can help you with hypnosis. No, like, you need to go to John Gods. You need to go to rehab. You, you're a cocaine. I can help you with social thing, what but you're talking about is is focusing on the areas that you know you're good at and that you can deliver results on But everyone as well, but also yeah it's the same for everybody yeah you know, people are saying, Oh, you know, Johnny's a heroin addict. Oh, oh yeah, I can see you, I'll help you with heroin. No, like they need to go to uh, rehab. But the problem is people don't. People think, you know, I've seen people in our own country and otherwise saying, Oh no, hypnosis can help with alcoholism. Yeah, you know, if someone's an alcoholic, it's a completely different scenario to I'm drinking too much wine at the weekend, I want to cut back. If someone's a heroin user, you know what I mean? You can't hit one hypnotherapy session and say I'm gonna cure them. Yeah, it's a really So, interesting point. You have to you really have to have an ethical boundary and so as i said the key is is what we're going to be doing at the conference this year is we're going to be talking about 10 new ways to make uh we're going to be doing a q a you and i and we're going to be talking about how we can help people who are coming to the conference to turn their hobby which a lot a lot of the time for an awful lot of people um they can't make a full-time income out of hypnotherapy whether that be in the clinic uh as part of their profession or maybe they want to get into stage or so on but nobody um a lot of people aren't making an income out of this or making an income you know that's not sustainable or an income that they need to raise you know they still have to keep them in their jobs Of course, right. so that's really what we're focused on this year you know as, as we've said there's enough people doing the therapy show the thing showing people more therapy things and therapy um modalities and so on but now what we're interested in is we're going to be focusing on my presentation on the business and how you can make your hypnotherapy practice much bigger much better much more effective much more efficient uh how you can take in new streams uh of income uh that can raise your profile raise your business raise your marketing raise your media and then 
you can be a much better therapist because you'll have more clients and you'll be able to work full time on just being a hypnotist rather than being a hypnotist and being a hairdresser or being a hypnotist and being an accountant. Because I know a lot of people we met last year still have day jobs. No, no, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, there's so, a couple yeah. of interesting things in there. I mean, one, you know, when you going back a bit, but when you spoke about, say, counseling and medical, I'm always fascinated how in the model of the world that we live in, you know, most of the problems that people have that come with are emotional. But mm. people look at them from that logical perspective of a counseling or a medical. It's A, B, C. But actually, a lot of the causes for this are actually emotional. So if you can actually treat the cause, then that changes everything. Yeah. Um, but you do need to be specialized in what you do because there is that whole thing of social responsibility for the profession because that's what this conference is about is expanding right. hypnotherapy yeah. as a solution. I think a really important point from your point of view is to open, is to contact like the Irish Congress of GPs, mm -hmm. the Irish Association, the Irish uh, the IICP of counsellors, um, the Psychology Society of Ireland. I think from an organisation point of view, you should be reaching out to all these people and getting them to come, even students, psychology students. There's so many different markets that 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 could be tapped into that would benefit them and the conference. Absolutely. I think, society, but, because I think, I think, um, as I said, every time I was in my door in the clinic, I said, the first thing I said is, look, there's no swing and watches here. There's no shout and sleep. And I always, my opening salvo with everyone in the clinic, I often say, I ask them what they work at and they'll say, oh, I work as a nurse. And I say, okay, when you work as a nurse, is that the same as when I look at ER or Grey's Anatomy on TV? And they'll say, well, no, of course not. You know, that's, that's the movie. I say, exactly. So that's the way I want you to look at hypnosis. You're not going to come in here and I'm not going to wave a wand. I'm not going to shed sleep. I'm not going to know your secrets. I'm not going to read your mind. I'm not going to get you to see dead people, whatever you see. Because that's the problem is that I, my opinion has always been that hypnotherapy um, and hypnosis is something that Hollywood can use to say anything. And that's the only way people have had experience of it, in including ourselves, probably. Before Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I realize, well, actually, no, that, that I've said before, people like Sigmund Freud, modern modern psychology father, of, uh, it was a hypnotist. People go, oh, yeah, I didn't know that, you know? So from our childhood, from Scooby-Doo and the Smurfs, right up to modern day Captain Underpants, right up to the recent Ben Affleck movie, to the horror movie Get Out. That's the only way people are exposed to hypnosis and they automatically think, oh, you're going to control my control. Absolutely, yeah. And I think actually that's the biggest problem for the profession. You know, people might say a stage or whatever, you know, because they do look, some people will look down at it. But actually, it's actually Hollywood is what dictates where yeah. people actually get most of the settings from. And we know that that's not real life. Um, yeah. But yeah, so just getting back to the conference then, I mean, there are a couple of presentations um, with Sheila Granger, with Stephen McGill on marketing and with yourself on business. So of the 20, I mean, there is a, a focus on business and there has to be um, because like, like we've said, without business, the doors don't stay open. So it ultimately is about attracting customers um, into your business that you can actually help. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sufficient to numbers, which is the key. Yeah. So the idea is, and look, look, I'm the first to admit, and we've talked about it. It goes and swings and roundabouts. Yeah. I'm, you know, I can be busy ten months of the year, but it'll always be a week or two or three here and there where business gets quiet as well. And I, that's no matter what business you're in. You know what I mean? In the Christmas trees, absolutely. The rest of the year. Everyone's business is like that. And the thing is how you bounce back from that and how you utilize that time. You kind of go, well, I normally have 10 clients a week. I've got a week here or two weeks where I don't have 10 clients a week. What can I do? Well, I've always wanted to work. For example, when I'm quiet, as I said, I work an awful lot on my social media. I'm always pitching. I'm making contact and making uh, pitches to new companies and new businesses. I'm putting fish. I always call it fishing line. I'm putting a fishing line into the Absolutely. water. Business. And all you need is, you know, when you're doing this, and this is again what I'm going to be preaching about and talking about is you only need one bite. You know, I, I made a lot of money in the wedding industry as a wedding singer. And I was doing shows in Vicar Street. And my, I used to produce the Rat Pack. And like I was doing Vicar Street, but it was only one show a year, two shows a year. And by that pivot into the wedding industry, I ended up making a million pounds a year doing that. Um, and that was something that I wasn't expecting. You know, who would have ever thought I would have made money as a wedding singer? It doesn't sound wonderful and sexy. Mm. You know, equally, 
I did a, a you know, with a, a guy I'm going to be talking about, a guy up the north who does a sales funnels that I work with a lot. And we developed this gastric band hypnotherapy sales funnel. And as I said, all the other ones fell to the side, but one of them worked. That one's made me quarter of a million in the past two years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Be the stage show, you know what I mean? You know, a couple of years ago, when the band uh, finished college and I was starting the clinic and the band, the bookings for wedding bands were going down because of the crash, um, I developed, I came up with this concept of a wedding hypnotist. And again, the same thing, you know what I mean? We've probably made a million euro from that as well. So the, the, you don't know, I think it, it, being an entrepreneur, you're, you're constantly throwing these fishing lines out. Some of them will work, some of them will think, uh, but you only need one bite. And if you get one bite from, you know, something you've thrown at, you might, you know, maybe saying to you, look, you know, you work in Wexford, you work in Waterford, there's a big college there. Why aren't you targeting the college? And you could make one email and then end up getting a presentation of the college and end up doing a huge amount of work with the college. You know what I mean? Or you could be working in a, in a county where there's a big pharma uh, company who got a lot of money who want to have a wellness day. And you know what I mean? There's all these things. Are just opportunities, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> As the that's the kind of stuff that you're going to deal with then at the yeah, conference exactly and then as i said like to, to finish up not only am i teaching at the conference myself and yourself are going to be doing the training in may yeah. for a select for people we're going to be doing a sort of a, a day two-day training uh as you'll see here called the millionaire hypnotist where i'm going to teach people in depth and give them all my contacts so you know people who i work with in the seo world who manage my website, manage my Google ads, people who run my funnels. Uh, you know, I've got contacts across the board. And what we're going to be doing is teaching people how to get free media, teaching people how to increase their sales, people how to launch products online, how to do uh, wellness events. Uh, that's what I'm going to be teaching. So I'm going to, I haven't done a training since 2013. Right. Uh, I did an appearance last year with Richard Barker. I uh, was the only person I would bother doing anything with because he's that, that I respect him so much. But uh, I haven't done an actual training, actual day or two face-to-face -face training with people in over a decade. Um, so I'm going to do that with John. Uh, we're going to do this together. So it's a limited thing. There's only a handful of places going to go on. We're going to give a 100 euro discount to anyone who wants to come. It's going to be the last weekend, the 23rd, 24th of May, one of those weekends in May, before the second last weekend of May. It's going to be two days. It's normally going to be on 300 euro to do the whole weekend of training. But for anyone attending John's conference, it's going to be 199. So I'd suggest they reach out to me or John straight away to get on the waiting list for that because we're only going to take a handful We're of people. just about to ask, how do people find out about that? Reach out to me. It's Jason the D4 Clinic, or they can reach John and he can give my details. But we're going to just list a handful of people because obviously we can't have you know 200 people, 300 people at the training. We're going to take you down to a limited amount of people. So to get on the waiting list for that, it's going to be 199 euro only for the whole weekend. Uh, it's like one client basically, uh, to learn these secrets at the end. And so John and myself will do it together. And what and you're the doing is you're taking the the ways that you're describing in the conference, and you're just applying more detail, more. Yeah, yeah going to be the, the how to behind it yeah the conference is going to be an hour presentation about how we can do how we can help you and how we can uh, answer some questions and sort of get you from working part-time as a hypnotist maybe working full-time or if you're full-time to increase your income with your business yeah the the training is going to be sort of a day or two probably a saturday and half a sunday maybe um in dublin where we can do the training and we can help you to take them to the next level rather than just come up with the idea who can we put you in contact with to help you to build your funnel help you to build your seo your website how to do it in an economical way how to look at it at different angles and sort of uh, we're going to be doing an awful lot of sort of trashing out of ideas to help you sort of brainstorming to help your particular business move to the next level and whether that be stage or whether that be online or downloads or schools or mindfulness events or mental health events you know we can work together to try and figure out what works best for you using the skills that each individual therapist has well it's going to be a lot of information and a lot of useful information that people can use um, exactly. and they're also going to get an awful lot of useful information at the conference because there's going to be 20 speakers across Every topic that, you know, from marketing to techniques to inductions to as well as just introductions to new people and meeting old friends. And I mean, I think last year we learned, you know, loads of people made a whole load of new connections that didn't exist before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But people reconnected as well. Yeah, I think that's really brilliant. I think that's really your goal, which you set out before you even organized this, said to me that it was about building up a community. Yeah. And I 
that's really like I had no even I had no idea there were so many different hypnotherapists across the country. There's not a register anywhere, so yeah. <laughs> I'm getting yeah, there. Things that I'm, you know, as I said, um, I think there's an awful lot of people that you're coming in contact with, which are amazing people who are doing stuff that I don't do and I've never heard of uh, from different parts of the country. And I think everyone has something to offer. But as I said, the, the, sort of the, the, the bones we're going to be talking about is that there is going to be, you know, you won't have a business unless you have customers. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, there's, there's two aspects of that. You you know, and the general view is that we need to learn all the tools and techniques to, to, to help people. And that's true. We do. But yeah. we also need to have a business. So you can't just ignore that side of it. Um, because if you do, then you won't be able to apply those tools and techniques um, yeah. to the to the level um, that you can um, and that people need, which is the other side of it. Because then the profession benefits. And that's the ultimate objective of this conference is that hypnotherapy is a more is a go-to therapy for people and it's not hidden right. as the last resort which most of us have done we yeah. should be in the same category as the counselors and the cbt therapists and the mindfulness therapists and the sleep and the uh all those type of things you know yeah and i think you know as we and i'm I don't, i'm not using the term professional because that gives a kind of a structure to it but as we become more organized and more coherent and more information becomes available that we all use, the profession will actually rise. And that's ultimately because the expectation will be that, you know, we can deliver results for people. Um, exactly. But actually, that involves investing time and effort in people's own careers, whether it's in coming to conferences or whether it's in not just enhancing their therapeutic skills, but their business skills. It's a, it's a rounding of every part. Absolutely. So one doesn't work without the other. There's no, there's no point in brilliant. Uh, a lot of clients contact you and you're a terrible hypnotist, or there's no point in being a great hypnotist and having no clients. So it's as I said, it's something that we're going to be doing. So, you know, to finish up, what I'll say is, you know, if you haven't buy a ticket to the conference, come to the conference, meet me, meet John, meet Sheila, meet a lot of the uh, Sean Sean from America. An awful lot of people are going to be there who've anything that you want to do, and I've always had this in business, someone's already done it. So yeah. oh, you're able to just copy what we've already done. We've already sort of broken through the glass ceilings for a lot of different things, um, for ideas and media and downloads and wellness. And as I said, legal, the science stuff that we're doing in schools. And, you know, we can help you to sort of get to that way. So get your ticket for the conference. Um, come and see me. I think I'm on 10 to 11 on the Saturday morning. We're going to be doing a great chat there with everybody in a QA and a with me and John. And then, you know, as I said, contact me if you want to come and do it at Millionaire Hypnotist Weekend uh, in Dublin towards the end of May. Uh, contact me privately and we'll organize. We've only got a handful of tickets for that. We're only doing a small amount of people. It's only going to cost 199 euros. So it's really good value for money. And I look forward to meeting you all at the conference. Brilliant. Well, listen, thank you, Jason. It's been a lovely conversation and it's loads of information for people um, to to in, increase their practice in, in, in the forms that needs to be to get people yeah. thinking. Uh, find me, can contact me at D4 Clinic, the number uh, four D, D letter four clinic.ie or just Google my name, Jason O'Callaghan. I'm very easy to find on, on the internet. Brilliant. Well, listen, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you on in April, in the, on the 20th of April at the Clayton Hotel, Dublin Airport. And for everyone else who's watching, I just want to, whatever time of the day it is and wherever in the world you're watching, I just wish you an absolutely amazing day. And I will see you in Dublin on the 20th of April. Have a great day.